Buenos dias, clase, or buenas tardes. Not sure what time it is when you see that. Uh, no sé, ¿qué hora es? Uh, ¿Qué me falta? Todos, qué triste. Okay, clase, tengo mi cafecito. I have my coffee. And um, let's take a look at what our lesson is for today. Holy shamolis, it's a big one. Um, today's lesson is dealing with the preterite tense. It's definitely the beast of all verb conjugations in Spanish, which you well know if you are my Spanish 2 or Spanish 3 student, uh, because we've already unpacked this. Um, if you're looking at it for the first time, I would definitely have some notes out or some paper out so you're ready to write stuff down. Also, what I'm going to be showing you can be found on my website, kleinspanish.com, and you can also go to my Quizlet links from my homepage, I have practice for the preterite online as well on flashcards. So hopefully it helps. All right. So for today, like I said, definitely the hardest tense in Spanish ever. Um, again, reminder of my Quizlet, but the best way to link to my Quizlet directly is right through my homepage versus trying to hunt for it on the Quizlet site itself, especially now that I'm seeing that some of Quizlet is no longer free. Um, I would hate for you to get caught up in some kind of filter or something and then it try to charge you. I will do my best always to keep my materials free. All right, and um, here we go. On my website, I wanna make sure you are aware that I have this document present. So if you go to my website and you go to preterite tense, my handouts or my notes, you're going to find I've got this chart that actually has um, the regular AR, ER, um, IR conjugations in the preterite with some examples. And then I also have um, the four, the true irregular, said and eed. Remember said and eed, those of you that I have had already as students, um, there are four true irregulars, but only three conjugations. And that has to be because ser and ear share one conjugation. Again, just to confuse things, right? Um, also remember that the four true irregulars do not have accent marks. Then we have the family Kargar and Tsar, all right, uh, where in the yo form, only in the yo form, you have a stem change, but the rest of the verb conjugates whatever normal is um, for the preterite. Also be aware in the yo form and the elea usted form, just like the regular verbs, that's where you're gonna find the accent marks. Then you have what I like to call the karate chop verbs. And that's because you've got a nice little haya that gets built into the bottom part of your chart. So you have a karate chop there. Only the bottom part of your chart, those of you that are more visual, um, maybe you can see that. Let's take a quick look at that. Um, I can give you some examples of karate chop verbs. Um, I know once I show students this, it helps them understand how you know if it's a karate chop verb. So if you have the verb leer, for example, to read, when you drop the last two letters, you're left with a letter. That tells you it's in the karate chop family. AR verbs are not allowed to be members of this family, only ER. ER. So therefore, if you have an ER verb or you have an IR verb, when you take off the last two letters, if you're left with a vowel sitting here, then you know you're dealing with a karate chop family verb. That's something to be aware of. In this family, everything has an accent mark except the AOS form. So that's something you'll need to remember. Only the AOS form has an accent mark. Then you come to this family, which is crazy. These are your 14 irregular stem changers. Notice here, so your endings are all the same. They totally disregard if it's an AR, ER, or IR verb. It doesn't matter. 
If it's a member of this family, these are the endings it uses, and you get a break. You have no accents. Do you see how beastly this is? All right, so you have no accents, all right? Asid wants to be even more special than the other ones, in that in the Elia Usted form, it becomes iso. I mean, why? But it does. All right, then you have these two verbs, decide and triad. These, because they go to a J for their stem, they drop the I's in the AOS form, just to be more special, I guess. So be aware, this is a tricky family. Um, Senor Jordan on my website has a wonderful song where he put all of these irregular verbs to the song of La Cucaracha. So it's a great uh, one to listen to, to review in order to be able to remember what the stems are. Remember we spoke about that before. You take off the last two letters, you're left with the stem, and then some verbs are stem changers because they actually have a change within now what's left behind. So this is your 14 irregular stem changers. And then the last family, so mean, they didn't even get a name. Uh, they are the following. The verbs pedir, dormir, sentir, and seguir. These verbs have the present and the preterite. They're put side by side on this chart for you. I want you to see their stem changing. They're also IR verbs. So ER verbs and, I, and AR verbs are not allowed in this family. So there's only these four verbs. And what they do in the present tense, they undergo stem changers. And in the preterite, only the bottom part of the chart undergoes the stem change. And again, it's only these four verbs. So can you see why the preterite is as difficult as it is? Um, you're not only learning a set of endings for the preterite, but then you have to take in all the quirkiness of the different families in the preterite. So I'm gonna walk you through some notes now. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the preterite and again, make you aware this page is actually available on my website if you would like a copy of it. It's a great resource when reviewing the preterite. Also, my Quizlet. I made a Quizlet for the preterite and it jumps you through all the different families so that you can practice how to conjugate these verbs. All right, so let's switch over to a lesson on the preterite. All right, el pretérito, as it's known in Spanish. All right, so you have regular verbs. You have verbs that have changes. And then you have verbs that are just flat out irregular. Remember, I told you uh, the preterite is not for the faint at heart. It is a difficult tense. Our AR verbs, regular ones, are e, aste, o, amos, asteis is your vosotros, which simply showing you, you don't have to know. And then aron is your um, ellos, ellas, ustedes form. Take note that you have an accent mark. Um, in the yo form and the elea usted form, showing you the verb tomar, tome, tomaste, tomo, tomamos, tomastais, and tomaron. So you can see an example. ER and IR verbs in the preterite. Remember in the present tense, we needed to be aware if the verb ended in ER or if it ended in IR in order to have the endings. Well, not so much in the preterite. They have one set of endings. So you have e, iste, io, imos, isteis, and iron. The yo form and the leo usted form, just like the ar regular verbs, have the accents. All right. Also, be very, very careful. One of the most common errors that are done when writing er and ir verbs in the preterite tense is people seem to like to put the accent mark on the i. It's actually on the o on the Elea Usted form. An example, the verb abrir, to open, abri, abriste, abrió, abrimos, abristeis, and abrieron. All right, so therefore you can see it in action. Let's 
do some practice. So I'll give you a moment and you try and figure it out. So if I have bebe in the yo form, present tense, what would it be in the preterite? I'll give you a moment. Hopefully, you got bebe. Compartir, which means to share in the ella form. All right, so compartir. Um, that's the present tense. What are you going to do for the preterite? Let me give you a moment. All right, let's see how you did. Compartió. Enseñar, to teach or to show in the nosotros form. Hmm, what is it going to be? If you thought enseñamos, you're absolutely right. AR verbs in the preterite and in the present tense conjugate the same way. So only on sentence context would you know if it's in the present or the preterite. Lavar. Oh, tenemos que lavar las manos, right? Washing, to wash. So lavar, to form. What would that be? Hmm. Lavaste. Let's take a look at vivir in the to form. So what would you do with that one? If you got viviste, good job. Salir. For nosotros, therefore, hopefully you got salimos. Mandar, to send. In the yo form, what's that going to be? It's an AR verb. Mandé, good. What about vender, to sell? Ustedes form. Let me give you a moment. If you got vendieron, very good. Then we have correr. ¿Qué es correr? Correr is to run. So then we have ellos and correr. Hmm, what would that be? If you got corrieron, very good. And then we have trabajar, to work, okay? Usted form, what would you think that would be? If you got trabajo, then you're right. Good job. So these are our regular conjugations of the preterite. Now we have cargar and czar verbs. These are tricky. Remember that the spelling change or the stem change only occurs in the yo form. So therefore, if it's a car verb, the C changes to Q-U. If it's a gar verb, the um, gar changes to G-U. And then if it's a czar verb, Z-A-R verb, then the Z changes to C, all right? Um, Everything, since it's all in the yo form, keeps the E uh, for the accent on there. All right. And so there's our verb buscar. So yo busqué. Um, tocar. So toqué. Llegar. To arrive. Right. Llegué. Jugar. Right. Goes to jugué. Almorzar. To have your lunch. Almorcé. And practicar. Practiqué. So this is one you got to watch out for. It's a little tricky, but as soon as you see that the verb ends in cargar or czar, you know you're dealing with this family. Our spelling change verbs, the karate chop verbs, right? Where the Y and the L and AOS forms only. All forms are accented except the AOS form. So let's take a look. We've got your verb leer to read. All right, so we have leí, leíste, and look what happened to the I. It became a Y. Leyó, leímos, leísteis for vosotros, and then leyeron. Notice that everything here has an accent except the ellos form. This becomes really, really important, especially going forward, investing the time and energy in learning your preterite. Um, as my Spanish 3 students know, now doing the imperfect subjunctive. Where we start our conjugations is actually in the preterite tense. So please invest the time and energy. I know it's a beast, uh, but let's keep going forward. Keep giving this a shot. Again, if you're a visual person like I am, you'll remember that it's just the bottom part of the chart where the Y's get dropped in and then everything has um, an accent except the AOS form. Your verb oír. 
um, has your accents and Kayed. Again, just a reminder, the only members that can be in this family are ER verbs or IR verbs. When you take off the last two letters, if you're left with a vowel there, it's a karate chop verb. So we're gonna complete this now. This is gonna be checking if we can figure out the irregulars. All right, so I had yesterday, I played the piano. Now notice it's a car verb. So what's gonna happen um, to that C? Toque, right? So T-O-Q-U-E, the yo form and the L-A-O stead form with car, gars, are verbs, remember, um, does keep the accent. Okay, almorzar, so hello, Kirk. Um, yo almorce, right, in Taco Bell, right? So your Z changes to a C. Then we have a gar verb. Let me give you a moment and see if you can remember what to do with that. So I turned off the lights in my room. Good thing, right? Apague. A-P-A-G-U-E with an accent there. Hopefully you got that right. Okay, oid. Okay, let's take a look at oid. So what kind of a verb is oid? Do you remember if you take off the last two letters and you're left with a vowel and it's an E-R and I-R, you're dealing with the karate chop family. So yo so and oid. So I heard the, the news yesterday. So what's that going to be? Oiste, okay, and then we have an accent. Remember in the karate chop family, everything has an accent except the aos form. All right, yo, now we've got a gar verb again. So I played video games, all right, which I'm guessing a lot of you are doing right now while we're not in school. So what are you going to do with that gar verb? So yo, huge. Then you have ustedes and leer. What kind of verb is leer? You got to pay attention to that. All right. So leer is a karate chop verb. So you guys read a book for your English class. So let's take a look. What are you going to do with leer? Ustedes leyeron. It's a karate chop verb. But remember, not only do you drop a Y into the bottom part of the chart, there's no accent. So be careful, that family can be a little sneaky. Okay, let's do a little practice, all right? So this is some mental floss, right? Because I'm showing you the verb in the present tense. Now you need to take it to the preterite, all right? So you also have to figure out what conjugation that is in the present tense. This is not easy. So you need to give yourself a moment. So let's take a look at number one. Number one, plancha, from the verb planchar, to iron. Hmm, plancha, what is that conjugated in? I think it's L-A-O usted in the present tense. So therefore, si ella plancha or el plancha, what's that going to be in the preterite? Let's take a moment. What do you think? El o ella planchó. Number two, vendes. Hmm, ends in es. Therefore, that must be the two form in the present tense, right? From the verb vender, to sell. What's that going to be in the preterite? What do you think? Vendiste. It's a regular preterite. Oh, here's a trap. Look at this. All right, number three, practico. So the verb is practicar, okay? And it's in the yo form. It's a C-A-R verb. So what are you going to do with that in the preterite tense? What do you think? Practique, okay? So remember, it's a cargarzar verb, and it's going to end in an accent there. Oh, look at this, another trap. The verb is leer. I've got it in the yo form. So what am I going to do? If you thought leí with an accent, you got it right. Good job. Number five, compartimos. That means to share. 
And that's in the nosotros form, right? So let's take a look. Hmm. Compartimos. What's that going to be? Compartimos. That was a trap, right? It conjugates the same way. Okay, now I'm not going to talk you through the whole thing. Let's see how you do. So on number six, comprender means to understand. What are you going to do? What form is that in? If you thought the ellos form and you got it to comprendieron, good job. Next verb. The verb is ganar, to win. Stop and think. What form is it in? And then how are you going to change that to the preterite? If you guessed el ella usted form, you got it right. Ganó. Investigar is your verb to investigate. Think about what form that's in and then change it to the preterite. If you got the ellos form or ellas form, investigaron, good job. Now we have the verb sacar. If you got sacaste in the to form, you're right. Yes, it's a cargarzar verb, but remember the stem change only happens in the yo form. So hopefully you remembered that. Okay, then we have empieza, to begin. The verb is empezar. Hmm, what are you going to do with that in the preterite? El ella usted form, empezó, all right? Apagamos, means to turn off, right? An electric device, all right? Um, what are you going to do with that? Apagamos. Remember, AR verbs are the same in the present and the preterite. Next one. Tocar is your verb, to touch or to play an instrument. What are you going to do with that one? Tocaste. Okay, so there we go. It was a cargarzar verb, but again, it's in the two form, so you didn't have to do anything else with it. And then number 13, oir. Okay. And here it is in the present tense, oyes. What form is that in? It is a karate chop verb, so it actually has an accent in the two form. Oiste. I hope you did okay with us. Let's look at our stem changing verbs. Remember I told you preterite is beastly. There's a lot to it. So our stem changing verbs. Only IR have the stem change in the predit. These were that irregular family that we talked about that only had the four verbs. Okay, so we had pedir and we had dormir. Remember I told you it was just the bottom part of the chart. Okay, so only changes in the L and the AOS forms. The chart is going to be pretty helpful if you can copy that for yourself, either write it down on a piece of paper or make a copy of it, um, that would be a big help. These are some other verbs that fall into that family, but really all you have to do is worry about those top four that I gave you on the chart. Okay, Clase, let's go ahead and practice those irregulars. So we have la mesera, the waitress, um, served the dinner. All right, this is one of those four, uh, the last part of your chart that's irregular, so sirvió. Jorge comer sus tacos, so he ate his tacos, so therefore, that's a regular verb. So what are we going to do with that? Jorge comió. Leon took a nap, right? He was sleeping in the park, all right? Of course, keeping his space from everybody, so Leon... Durmió. It's one of those stem changers. And then Alfonso y su primo. Bailar is a regular AR verb. Bailaron mucho. Alrighty. No, this is getting long. Remember I told you the preterite is a beast. So let's keep going. We've got this. 
Got some more practice here. Okay, classy. We have a little bit more practice, so let's see how you do. So yo, look at what kind of verb this is. Cruzar. So I cross the street to go to the theater. So what are you going to do with that? What do you think? If you guessed cruce, you got it. Okay? It's Z to C. It's a cargarzar verb. Todos los estudiantes, repetir is your verb. So all the students repeated the verbs. This is one of those irregulars where you have an E to I change. Los atletas, oh, look what kind of verb I threw in there. Jugar en el campo. But does it matter? Is it in the yo form? No, it's in the eos form. So therefore, changes like a regular preterite. Jugaron. All right, let's take a look at this. El gato and dormir. What are you going to do? So the cat slept far from the dog. What are you going to do? If you say durmió, you got it. Good job. Mi papá, my dad, read a newspaper or a magazine in the family room. What are you going to do with leer? What kind of verb is that? I'm taking off the last two letters. I'm left with a vowel here. And it's the LAO said form. What are you going to do? Mi papá leyó. Two and cerrar. You close the door before you left. What are you going to do with that? Two cerraste. It's just a regular verb. Ustedes and tomar. You guys took an exam. Tomar. Nice regular verb. So, ustedes what? Tomaron. Mis hermanos. So, my brothers, right? Or my siblings. Look at the verb. It's oír. So, they heard the news yesterday. What kind of verb is this? You're taking off the last two letters. You're left with a vowel. What kind of verb is that? Mis hermanos. Oyeron. It's in the EOS form, no accent, but it does get the Y dropped into it. It's a karate chop verb. Yo en practicar el tenis. So I practiced tennis last night. It's a car verb. Oh my goodness, what are you going to do? Because it's even in the yo form. If you did practique, good job. Clara and bailar. Con sus primos. So Clara danced with her cousins. This is a regular verb. So what are you going to do? Clara is she, so ella. So ella bailó con sus primos. Okay. Hang in there, guys. Um, we're going to change these verbs to the preterite now. Again, more of that mental floss, making you work a little bit harder. So we have hablas. The verb is hablar. What form is that in? Stop and think. It's in the to form. So what's that going to be in the preterite? Hablaste. Leemos. The verb is leer. What form is that in? Did you say nosotros? You're right. So therefore, leemos. Comienzan. So to begin, to start, comenzar. What are you going to do with that? What form is that in? If you said the ellos form, comenzaron, you're right. Juegas. The verb is jugar, to play. So to play a sport, to play a game, it's in the to form. What are you going to do with it for the preterite? Jugaste. Caigo. The verb is caer, to fall. Hmm. And that's the yo form. Let's take a look. Cayer. Hmm. What verb is that? What kind of verb is that? It is a karate chop verb and it's caí in the yo form. Pedir is your verb. It's a stem changing verb. What form is that in? Let's stop and think. So, pidió. El pidió. El usted form. Prefieres. The verb is preferir, to prefer. All right, what form is that in? I think it's the to form. So therefore, how are you going to change that to the preterite? Preferiste. 
Cuentas. Your verb is contar, to count. All right, so what's that going to be in the preterite? Contaste. Dormir is your verb. Duermen is your verb in the present tense. So dormir, to sleep. All right, what's that going to be in the preterite? What form is that in? If you said ellos, you're right. So ellos durmieron. Look at, we've got a little curveball here. We've got reflexive verbs sitting here. I'll be talking about reflexive verbs in a different video, but you can also find a review of them on my website. So se visten, so reflexive. Remember the actions coming back on the original person. Visten, what form is that in? Ellos, right? So therefore se vistieron. Sirve, servir, right, to serve. El sirvió. Repetir, to repeat. Yo, right, repito, therefore yo repetí. And again, another reflexive verb, se divierten, they have fun. Se divirtieron. All right, a little bit more to go. Um, just a quick reminder. You have that sheet that I showed you at the beginning that has my preterite. Okay, just finishing up with a quick reminder. Remember, I have this chart available on my website that gives you really the overview of the entire tense. It's much easier. I know this is a very difficult tense. There's a lot to it. Again, I'm pointing you towards my Quizlet. Um, there are some good practice flashcards there to help you maneuver this. Remember, this one's the beast. Um, the reason you use the preterite, very important. You need to know the reason. Um, preterite is something that's used for a completed action in the past. So that's super important. When we get to the imperfect tense, you're going to learn that um, you have something for repeated actions or something that just happened. So preterites, they focus on the fact that it has a very narrow scope. It's something that was completed in the past. You know exactly how many times it happened. Um, it really, like I said, very narrow scope where it becomes even a bigger deal or something you really, really need to know more is when we get to the imperfect subjunctive in Spanish three. But for now, you know, good luck, take some time, practice this, uh, get more solid in your preterite. I know it's tough. Be patient with yourself. Um, go over the different families. If you can think of them of different family groups, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to remember. Again, preterite tense is a completed action in the past. You know exactly how many times it happened. You know it only happened once or it happened maybe twice, three times. You're very, very narrow in your scope. Okay, Classe, I know that was a lot. I'm going to say thank you. Gracias. I hope you're doing well. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. Adios. Hasta pronto.